நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video I explained about the natal chart of actor Ajit. In this video I am going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Sagittarius Ascendant. For the native of Sagittarius Ascendant, moon is the lord of the 8th house. Moon is Ashtamativadi. When moon resides in the house of Sagittarius, that is in the Ascendant house, as per Bhavad Bhava, it will be in the 6th house to its own house. This planetary position is considered to be good. Though the moon is the lord of the 8th house, moon is a friendly planet to the ascendant lord Jupiter. Therefore, moon will not do worse effects to the natal of Sagittarius ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi. The combination of Sagittarius Ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi indicates the connection of spiritualism. Since both Rashi and Ascendant are Sagittarius, the native will be a very good person. Based on light energy of the moon, you have to make further predictions. What will happen when Lord of the 8th house resides in the Ascendant house? You will think a lot before doing an action and you will always have a hesitation to initiate an action and somebody has to prod you to execute an action. Based on Subhatva and Pabhatva of the moon, these qualities will be more or less. Since moon is the lord of the 8th house, it a friendly planet to the Ascendant Lord, it will not do very bad effects to the native. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the second house. When moon resides in Capricorn, it will aspect its own house Cancer, which is the 8th house to the Ascendant. This will not deliver benefits. When Lord of the 8th house aspects its own house and strengthens it, it will not deliver any benefits other than giving longevity to the native. If the moon is Subhatva, the native will gain through share market. It will give unexpected gains and native will have connections with foreign countries. However, Lord of the 8th house should not aspect the 8th house itself. When the moon resides in the 2nd house, for the native of Sagittarius Ascendant, it definitely needs to be Subhatva. 
moon should have the connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter and Venus. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the third house which is Aquarius. The third house is good for the moon. When moon resides in third house it will aspect the ninth house to the ascendant. Moon should be Subhatva when it resides in the third house. It should have light energy. Why do I say that when moon resides in Aquarius it is beneficial? Since moon resides in one of the Upachayasthanas, which is the third house, and when it resides in the third house, it aspects the ninth house. And also, as per Bhavad Bhavam, it will be in the eighth house to its own house. When moon is waxing or heading closely towards Purnima, when it has got the connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter and Venus, it is considered to be good. Moon should not have connection of Saturn or Rahu, but it can have connection of Mars here. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the fourth house which is Pisces. When moon resides in Pisces for the native of Sagittarius ascendant it is considered to be very auspicious because it resides in the house of benefic and attains Digbala that is directional strength. The eighth house lord attains Digbala in the fourth house. This means that it is going to deliver all the good effects of the 8th house. Moon is going to deliver prolonged longevity and all the good house effects of the 8th house. But here it needs to be Subhatva to deliver all these benefits. When moon resides in the 4th house which is Pisces, both Rashi Lord and Ascendant Lord are same which is Jupiter. Based on the fact that Rashi Lord and Ascendant Lord are same for Sagittarius Ascendant and Pisces Rashi or Pisces Ascendant Sagittarius Rashi which is Jupiter, Moon will deliver immense benefits. And now let me explain the effects of the Moon in the 5th house which is Aries. Moon needs to have good light energy when it resides in 5th house which is Aries. Though the 8th house lord resides in the 5th house, when moon has good light energy, it will not deliver worse effects because this is a friendly house to the moon. The house lord of Aries which is Mars and the moon are mutual friends and they have a very good understanding. What will happen when the 8th house lord resides in the 5th house? The first child will be female not a male child. This planetary position will prevent giving birth to male children. When Lord of the 8th house resides in the 5th house, it will make some hindrance in getting a male child. If a male child was born despite this, there will be a situation because of which the child will not call the parent as father or mother. If female children are born, there will be a lot of expenses. It will deliver certain worries regarding the children. This is the prediction based on the house effects. This is the truth. The native will experience all these. In case if the moon is Subhatva, then the predictions will differ. There will be a hindrance in getting a male child and you also have to check the status of Jupiter in the natal chart. When Lord of the 8th house resides in the 5th house, you have to make predictions based on the house effects and Subhatva of the moon which will change the bad effects. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 6th house to the ascendant house which is Taurus. Moon should not be in the 6th house to the ascendant house. Because when moon resides in the 6th house which is Taurus, it establishes the connection between 6th house and 8th house. You have to remember that Venus being the 6th house lord should not reside in the 8th house and moon 
which is the eighth house lord should not reside in the sixth house when venus resides in the eighth house or when moon resides in the sixth house for the native of sagittarius ascendant it will establish six eight connections and one more important rule is the lord of sixth and eighth houses should not be in parivartan the connection of fifth and eighth house lords should not happen the sixth house lord and eighth house lord should not be in parivartan at all the eighth house lord should not reside in the sixth house and the sixth house lord should not reside in the eighth house this is such a bad combination the dasha and antar dasha of these planets will be worse for the native of sagittarius ascendant the combination of venus major planetary period and moon's minor planetary period is a deadly one or the other combination of the major planetary period of the moon and minor planetary period of the venus should not happen those who have experienced this will definitely write in the comment section what intensity of pain they would have undergone only those experienced knows the pain the mind of the native and everything will be worsely affected during this period both the mind and body will be affected during this dasha and antar dasha for the native of sagittarius ascendant the native of sagittarius ascendant should never undergo dasha of venus and antar dasha of moon or dasha of moon and antar dasha of venus what is the antidote for this deadly combination of course subatwa can alter the effects what will happen if moon is pabatwa that will bring an end to the life of the native i would not like to express this very explicitly but anyway i want to give a hint about this i hope you will understand it is important to know everything being an astrologer you have to know the disadvantages of pabatwa and advantages of subatwa of the planet whatever natal chart it is the lord of 6th and 8th house should not have more power in case the 6th house lord and 8th house lord are friends to each other then it is a different scenario some might question why i insist on this combination for the native of sagittarius ascendant there are many ascendants where i do not give much importance to the 6th and 8th house lord but why is the native of sagittarius ascendant special because the lord of the 8th house and the lord of the 6th house for the native of sagittarius ascendant are dead enemies they are the worst enemies moon and venus are dead enemies to each other for the native of taurus ascendant the 6th house lord is venus that is house lord of uh, libra and the lord of 8th house that is sagittarius is jupiter but these planets venus and jupiter are not dead enemies they have enemical nature but they are not dead enemies on the contrary for the native of sagittarius ascendant the 6th house is taurus and the 8th house is cancer the lord of the 6th house venus and the lord of the 8th house that is cancer is moon and these two are dead enemies and venus is not a friendly planet to the lord of sagittarius ascendant which is jupiter this is the reason why i insist for the native of sagittarius ascendant they should not undergo the dasha of venus and antar dasha of moon or dasha of moon and antar dasha of venus those who have 
witness the life of the people who are native of Sagittarius ascendant and undergone this combination of major planetary period and minor planetary period of Venus and Moon and those who have experienced this will know how intense the pain is. As per the age, the native will suffer a lot during the major planetary period of Venus and minor planetary period of the Moon. Based on the age of the native, you can understand what goes in their life. When Moon resides in 6th house, what happens? Moon is the lord of the 8th house and it gets exalted in the 6th house. When the 6th house lord is exalted, based on its subhatva, you have to make predictions. If it is Amavasya, then the worst effects delivered by the moon are immeasurable. If the moon has a connection with Saturn or Rahu, then it will kill the person. It will just leave the physical body to merely exist with no life in it. The native will be like a walking corpse. The major planetary period of the moon and minor planetary period of Venus will deliver very very bad effects. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the seventh house that is Gemini. This will affect the longevity of the native and it will give bad effects through the wife. What will happen? It will deliver deaths, litigation, shame and everything through the wife which is the main karaka of the seventh house. It will deliver all the house effects of the 8th house such as death, diseases, litigation, humiliation, shame, accidents through the 7th house which is the house of the spouse. For some people this will happen through their friends and for some people it will happen through their business partners. It will happen either by spouse or friends or business partners. When moon is Pabatva, all these will be delivered. And in case if moon is Subhatva, then the effects delivered will be completely different. The art of astrology lies in choosing the rules and applying them at the right place. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 8th house, which is Cancer, in its own house. When moon is Subhatva, then it will make the native to travel abroad, to stay in a foreign country for a long time. And if Jupiter aspects the 8th house and 12th house is also Subhatva, then definitely the person will get the citizenship of the foreign country. When moon is Subhatva, it will deliver the benefits of the 8th house. It will definitely give good longevity, unexpected gains, and it will deliver the good house effects of the 8th house. In case of moon is Pabatva, the native will not be able to go abroad at all. The Subhatva and Pabatva of the planet will deliver the effects which are at opposite poles. You have to make predictions about which house effects will be delivered by the planet based on Subhatva and Pabhatva of the planet. People get confused by not understanding the concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva of the planet while making predictions. If you understand my concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva, definitely you will understand the in-depth explanation of my videos. The Subhatva and Pabhatva of a planet can change the whole prediction of the major planetary period and minor planetary period of a planet. What will happen when moon stays as Amavasya in 8th house? The native will never want to go abroad or the native will go abroad and he will suffer there. When the 8th house is Subhatva, that is when moon is Purnima, the native will have great interest to go abroad. The native will wait for an opportunity to go abroad. This tendency even grow from 18 years of age. You are going to get settled abroad. You are going to earn a lot and you are going to send that money to your family members in India. 
All these will be delivered by Subhatua of the Moon in the 8th house. Here you cannot make predictions based on the Sthanabala of the Moon. By the grace of Almighty, I have realized the concepts of Subhatua and Pabhatua which are beyond the concepts of Sthanabala and Shadbala and I am able to share all these with you merely by the grace of God. Definitely, I know that the next generation who follows me is going to spread my concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength. Definitely, for the future generation, my concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva are going to be spoken about a lot merely by the fact that it is a great concept that helps to make 100% correct predictions. The truth never fails. It will be everlasting. The truth always lives and survives in the world. I have written about these in my books. I still wonder the reasons why Almighty chooses only few people to propagate the truth. Having said this, when the 8th house is Subhatva, it will let the native to go abroad and when moon is Pabhatva, it will not let the native to go abroad or if the native goes abroad, it will make the native suffer there. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the ninth house which is Leo. The eighth house lord should not reside in the ninth house. What will happen when the eighth house lord resides in the ninth house? It will spoil the status of the father. It will spoil the native place of the person. It will also spoil the house of Leo. However, when moon is Subhatva, it will not spoil much. When moon is Amavasya, the father will be affected in a worse manner. In case moon has got connection of Saturn and Rahu, it will deliver worse effects. The Lord of the 8th house, who is a very bad person, if resides in a house, will spoil the house very badly. It will completely spoil the house. Moon will also deliver these. Since the moon is the lord of the 8th house, it will not throw a sack of bricks. Rather, it will throw a sack of flowers on the head of the native. This is the difference when a malafic being the 8th house lord, spoiling the house where it resides, and a benefic being the 8th house lord spoiling the house where it resides. When moon is Subhatva, then everything will be under control. Bad events will definitely happen because moon is the 8th house lord, but when planet is Subhatva, it will be under the control. Let me explain the effects of the moon in the 10th house, which is Virgo. The 10th house is the house of Nishbala for the moon. Though the moon loses its directional strength, it is in the house of Mercury. When moon resides in Virgo, it resides in the house of Karma, that is Jeevanasthana. When 8th house Lord resides in the 10th house, it indirectly gives gains. If a native is getting a bribe, then definitely the 8th house Lord will be in the 10th house. I say this very openly to everybody. It indicates that a person is getting a bribe. The native will be cheating others. The native will not be able to say to others how he earned the money. He might be a great reputed officer and based on the Subhatva and Pabhatva of the moon, you have to make predictions whether this person post getting bribery will be caught by the government or not. If the native undergoes a bad major planetary period and minor planetary period, he will be caught for having earned crores of money. Based on the major planetary period and minor planetary period, you have to decide whether the person who has earned crores of money in a dishonest way will be caught by the government or will suffer only a small court case. When the 8th house lord resides in the 10th house, the native will indirectly earn income 
that is in a dishonest way in case moon is highly subhatva the person will earn money through the share market where he can express his source of income to others this share market source of income is recognized by society as a good one it is not a cheap and dishonest income like bribery based on the subhatva and pabhatva of the moon the 8th house and the 10th house you have to make predictions this is what all you have to understand by the connection of 8th house lord to the 10th house based on the subhatva and pabhatva of the planet you have to make predictions whether gains earned or by dishonest ways or is it something recognized by the society now let me explain the effects of moon in the 11th house which is libra in general we say that any planet in the 11th house will deliver benefits and the very same rule applies here when moon resides in libra it will be in the quadrant house to its own house as per bhavat bhavam moon is not going to deliver much worse effects since moon is a friendly planet to the ascendant lord jupiter therefore the 11th house is a good position for the moon for the native of sagittarius ascendant now let me explain the effects of moon in the 12th house this is not considered to be good for the native of sagittarius ascendant scorpio is the 12th house and moon should not reside in the 12th house to the ascendant house being the 8th house lord it will definitely affect the longevity of the native for the native of sagittarius ascendant definitely moon should not be in the 12th house in scorpio this will affect the mind of the native mother of the native and moon should not be afflicted in the 12th house moon gets debilitated in scorpio house if moon is waxing and heading closely towards purnima or when it is purnima and when it has got the connection of natural benefits such as jupiter venus moon will not get affected though it resides in the 12th house to the ascendant house it is not a good position for the moon to reside in 12th house being 8th house lord without any subhatva or without having its own light energy the dasha of the moon will not deliver any benefits when it resides in the 12th house in my next video i'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of capricorn ascendant well this is question time for the native of sagittarius ascendant when moon resides in the 10th house what are the possible predictions please write your answers in the comment section of this video in the description box we have added the playlist link of all english videos so far published the link of aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both ios and android users the link of aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both ios and android users The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writetous@gmail.com. Thank you.